This sermon came to me during our uh, lockdown with COVID from this start of the year. Uh, we were locked down, we were using all sorts of technology, and uh, I was noticing how much time I was spending staring at the screen. And then how many of you ever noticed that it pops up and it says, do you wanna know how much screen time you've been using? And you're kinda like, no, no I don't. Well, I, I clicked it and, and saw how much time I was using and it was so much time and I just thought, I, I, I'm not liking what all this tech time, all this screen time is doing. And I just started musing about it. It's like thinking about all the time with the technology and all the time that I'm doing there and, and what has happened in my life with the advancement of technology and all the things that are going on. And, and I just started thinking like, all right, this, all this is changing in my life. And, and, I, and I made a decision. I said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be less on tech. I'm gonna be less connected to this thing. And I actually moved my Instagram from an account that I had to a managed account, which means like somebody else takes care of it for me and posts things about the church. And uh, a lot of you are like, I responded to you on Instagram and you never said anything because I'm not checking it anymore, all right? And uh, I also have a managed Facebook account. I, I don't ever go there. I think I've only been to Facebook once in my life. And Instagram, uh, just, I, I was like, I'm not gonna do that. They're gonna take care of it. And side note, when I was on Instagram all the t while, I started noticing that social media and all these things are programmed to feed uh, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. And I thought, I'm trying to be more like Jesus, and the thing I hold in my hand is taking me the other direction. So I'm, I'm, it was like burning. I was like, get it out. And I had this moment. As I was holding my phone, I realized, like, man, we're getting faster, and, and you could identify with this. We're going faster. Our, our lives are getting faster, and, and we know more, and we have more, and we're, and, and, and we're just getting faster and faster and faster. And, and, and I prayed out this prayer, and I said, I, I was just sitting there, and I said, God, we're going faster. We know more, and we're not looking more like you. And I said, we failed at being God. And you're probably thinking, what did you mean when I prayed that? Here's what I meant. Like, uh, we, we, we've, we're holding so much power in our hands. God has given us creative power. God has given us some of his nature in us. And he said, you're like me. And he's given us little tastes, little nibbles, little portions of some of his attributes. And then I thought, God, we're tasting more and more of these attributes and we're failing. We're failing at being God. And I thought, you are such a good God and we're failing. And then I just felt like God was downloading this to me and, and so I wanna share it with you and, and I want you to think about this. I want you to ponder on this. I want you to take it and, and see how God speaks to you and wants you to change things in your life and also just to be able to say, God, how amazing you are. And I hope at the end of this message you'll realize how amazing God is, how small we are, and, and, and how we can align the power that he's given to us with the plan that he's put us on, the purpose that he's given to us, okay? So God has many attributes, and, and trust me, there's gonna be tons of scripture, but give me just a moment to set this stage here. God has many attributes. He's holy, he's righteous, he's sovereign, he's immutable, which means he can never change. He's also got what I would say, which are the, the big three um, um, attributes. We would say that he's omnipotent, that he's omniscient and he's omnipresent. And I'm, and, I'm, and I'm realizing with technology on the big three, we're starting to chase those big three and we're starting to get greater taste of those attributes in our life because of the advancements of society. And the more we get a bigger slice of it, which by the way, how big is our slice really? Like whatever we would get, like if we have knowledge, do we have one one hundredth? Please don't be that arrogant, you know one one hundred thousandth, you know, one one million, whatever it is. I just put, like, we've had a nibble of a crumb of the attributes, but our nibble is getting a little bigger, and we're failing. We're failing. Ever since the, the serpent tempted Eve with, like, you want to be, you want a little bit more of his attributes. If you eat this, you'll know. You'll have more knowledge like him. Ever since the Tower of Babel, where God gave people the ability to create things, they're like, we can create this and be like God. Ever since there was the ability to learn knowledge and to learn things, we're just like, I, I wanna be smarter, I wanna be, and then people say, the, I, I, there is no God. It's, it's like our knowledge makes us arrogant and we're failing at being God. And again, I, I, I just, please know when I say that, we're nowhere near God. We're nowhere near God. Matter of fact, like we're, we're just so, so, so far away. It, it's, not even, it's not even close. I mean, sometimes people come into me and they won't 
wonder if they're God. Sometimes people will wonder if they're the Antichrist, okay? I met with like seven people and they're like, I think I'm the Antichrist. I'm like, no, you're not smart enough to be the Antichrist. Get out. All right, yeah, all right. So it's true. We have a taste of being God. We have a little, little, tiny taste of being God, and we are failing at this. So I want to look at the big three, the big three, and these attributes. And the first one I look at is God is omnipotent, okay? He has omnipotence. It means the ability to do whatever consists with his character. God is able to bring to pass everything that he chooses. Uh, Omnipotence means that God has no external limitations, It means that God is all-powerful. That's a simple way to remember it. God is all-powerful. And there's some verses that help us. Job 42, 2 says, I know that you can do all things. No purpose of yours can be thwarted. Like, God, you can do everything. God, you can do it all. Matthew 19, 26, Jesus looked at his disciples and he said, with man this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. Genesis 18, 14, God is speaking to Abraham and Sarah, and he says, is anything too hard for the Lord? And the answer is no. No, because he's omnipotent. He has all power, unlimited power, and most amazingly, he has creative power. By his words, by his words, the earth was formed. By his word, I mean, think it, let there be light, boom, light, sun, by his word, he has the ability to, to speak things into existence. Psalms 33, six, the Lord merely spoke and the heavens were created. He breathed the word and all the stars were born. Genesis 1, three, and God said, let there be light. And there was light. He has the power to create. And it's interesting. This really wouldn't be as much of an advancement of technology. Maybe it is, I'll get there in a minute, but... God has given us the ability to create, you and I. We all have the ability to create. We have the ability to create with our words, with our tongue. We have the ability to create there, and then we have the ability to create with our reproductive organs. The, and how many know that in this area, we fail miserably? God's like, I'm gonna give you a little taste of the ability to have power, the ability to create. I'm gonna give you the ability to turn words into ideas and, and, and these things and let people take action and have these things turn into things because you speak it out. And he's like, I'm also gonna give you the ability through, through your reproductive organs to create life. And yet we fail at being God in this area. The Proverbs 18, 21 says, the tongue is the power of life and death and those who love it will eat its fruit, okay? So that's the power of the tongue. We have creative ability right here, right here. And then we have the creative ability in our reproductive organs. It says, Adam made love to his wife Eve and she became pregnant and gave birth to Cain. She said, with the help of the Lord, I have brought forth a man. It's amazing. We get into so much trouble with just our little taste of the creative power of God. I mean, the Bible is full of things like the tongue. I mean, just read James. How many know what I'm talking about? You read James and you're like, I got it right here. James 3, the tongue is also a fire, a world of evil among the parts of the body. It corrupts the whole body, sets the whole course of one's life on fire and is itself set on fire by hell. God's like, I gave you a tongue and look what you do with it. It's terrible. It's terrible. And then, I mean, one of the many, many, many scriptures that are there about our reproductive organs and our ability to, to uh, be sexual creatures, in 1 Thessalonians 4, 3, it says, it is God's will that you should be sanctified, that you should avoid sexual immorality, that each of you should learn to control your own body in a way that is holy and honorable, not in passionate lust like the pagans who do not know God. Now, it's interesting, technology has allowed our words to land faster. How many know I can have a thought and I could type it out, those are still my words, and then I could send it to you, and you could have it within a millisecond. And, I, and it's like no filter, and then I'm like, oh, shouldn't have sent, send, you know? But it lands faster. How many know that before texting, it was, you know, you'd be in your car, before there were cell phones, you'd be in your car, you'd be thinking what you're gonna say, you're gonna say, you're thinking about it, you think it through, maybe that's not a good idea, and you'd have a drive to get there, and then you'd be able to say it. Now we're just like, pick it up, say. Our, our technology has allowed our words to create trouble faster and life faster. Go ahead, give the money to kingdom builders. Life faster, right? Right, it's faster. Text to give, right there, faster, faster, right there. Boom, right? Okay, but it also could be, you're an idiot. 
right? And boom, you're tearing down your child. Immediately, boom. It, it, the technology is, and, and, and don't even go there, like the technology, the speed of what sexually can be on the phone in your hand. We are failing at the, the, the taste of what God has given us. And, and most interestingly to me, and I, I won't go down the road, but somebody's gonna find this fascinating. God places his mark on those two organs in the Old Testament and the New Testament. In the Old Testament, he says, I'm going to place a mark on the male reproductive organ and you'll be circumcised and that will be my mark on my people. In the New Testament, he said, I will pour out my spirit upon you and you will speak in new tongues. Isn't that interesting? Old Testament mark, New Testament mark. Two members that get us into all sorts of trouble. God's like, I marked it here, I mark it here. So we have these, and, and with our tongues, I pray that we will not fail this test. I, I pray that as we, we have the ability to speed words, as we have the ability to call, as we have the ability to get our words to go quicker, I pray that we'd speak life and we'd create with it in a positive way and we'd realize that we are failing at being God with our words and with our ability to reproduce with our, with our sex drives. I pray that we'd realize, God, we are failing there. You are perfect in your creative power and we've, you've given us just a little, little taste and it gets us into so much trouble. God, purify us. Purify us. Let our words be pleasing. Let our conduct sexually be countercultural to a world that, that has lost their way. And may we shine as lights with this little bit of omnipotence that you've given to I mean, just, again, the nibble of the nibble of the nibble. Okay, I gotta keep going. Omnipresence. Omnipresence means God is a infinite spirit being. He's everywhere present. God is present in all places, at all times. Psalms 139, verses seven through 10. I can never escape from your spirit. I can never get away from your presence. If I go to heaven, you're there. If I go down to the grave, you're there. If I ride on the wings of the morning, if I dwell in the farthest oceans, even there, your hand will guide me, even, and your strength will support me. Jeremiah 23, verse 23 and 24. Am I a God who is only close at hand, says the Lord? No, I am far away at the same time. Can anyone hide from me in a secret place? Am I not everywhere in all the heavens and earth, says the Lord. He's everywhere at all times. Now, it's interesting to me as well. With technology, as I was praying this that day, I realized I'm trying to be everywhere at all times. And I've started to use the speed of technology to be here, there, 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 go fast. One day in my life, I actually was traveling back from Russia. I had breakfast in Russia, I got on a plane. I had lunch in Germany. And then I had dinner in Italy. Dinner was best, by the way. I'm just gonna let you know. <laughs> three, three different countries in one day. I mean, boom, 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 boom. One of my friends calls the airplane the time machine. He said, I got in the time machine and I flew to the other side of the world. I mean, and what have we been doing in lockdown? This is, just, this is where God was giving me the download. We've been using Zoom and we've been Zooming. I could be anywhere in the world and I could be Zooming in and Zoom, Zoom, Zoom. And, and a lot of us were having Zoom fatigue because we didn't have any margin in our life. You went from Zoom meeting to Zoom meeting to Zoom meeting and you lost the drive time, you lost the downtime and all of a sudden you're Zoom, 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 Zoom. And Zoom just feels like, like uh, you're, you're, you're dying inside. They came up with Zoom. And, and again, it, we're, we're trying to, we're just getting a taste, just a taste, just a sliver of God's ability to be in all places at all times, and we're trying to go faster than, you know, and we're trying to get on a plane, go there, go there, and go there, and we're trying to zoom, 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 and all of a sudden, you know, and it said zoom fatigue, it said this. The BBC said, we're working harder to process the nonverbal cues. Our minds are together when our bodies feel that we are not, and we cannot relax into the conversation naturally, and we're getting zoom fatigue. And so people are burning out. And, and what's amazing is, do you realize God can zoom to you and me and me and all of us, and he's, he's doing more than zoom. How many know God is spirit, and he dwells within you if you're his child, and he speaks to you by the power of the Holy Spirit. While we were worshiping, the Holy Spirit could be speaking to you, 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 all different things. And it wasn't like one unique, you know, like everybody had the same message. Boom, 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 boom. And God's doing that, and he's like, pray for that healing and do that and do that, step on faith and do that. And you see? And God's not like... Got a bad signal, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> no, he doesn't do that. We're burning out. We're facing stress, depression, feelings of inadequacy, guilt, loneliness. And the faster we go, the lonelier we're getting. I think we're getting a taste of omnipresence 
and we're failing at it. We're going faster for work while losing our families. We're failing at it. And I don't think God wanted the beauty of technology because there's wonderful things. Like how many think like using Zoom technology as your grandparents and you're talking to your grandkids and you're like, that's really great. You could talk them in bed at night. And how many know you could be on the road if you have to be on the road and you could talk to your spouse. You could be, hey, I love you. Kiss, 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 you know. All right, and you got beautiful technology. I mean, I thank God for some of the things of technology. I once did a full conference call while I played 18 holes of golf with earbuds in. Yeah, true, true. Played the entire thing, and I just muted myself, and whenever they needed me, I'm like, yeah, I vote yes for that. All right, put it back in. Swing away. You know, I was like, and I was like, I, I'm, I'm on a conference call. All right, yeah. So praise God for that. But I also did this with Zoom. I took a phone, I took my phone, and I took a picture of myself doing the Zoom. And then I made my screensaver, and then I got up and made lunch, and, you know, and they saw me just sitting there. He never blinks. I got that from the kids. They're doing that with distance learning, by the way. Did you know that? They are. Man, don't burn out. Don't go so fast that you lose what you should love the most. Don't go so fast that you lose what you should love the most. Now, let me go back to omnipresence. Proverbs 15, 3. The eyes of the Lord are everywhere, keeping watch on the wicked and the good. This is mind-blowing. God is so good at being God, and we are so bad at being God. Every sin you do is in the presence of God. You can't hide from him. And yet he still lovingly says, repent of that. Don't let that hinder our relationship. That's not the way I want you to live. He doesn't say, get out of my presence. Hey, do you understand? He, that, that blows my mind. I mean, so he's, he's so good at being God and we're so bad at it. And I'm not telling you to never use technology. I'm not telling you to get on a plane. I'm not telling you to do that. I'm just saying that let's use it for his purposes rather than letting it destroy us, okay? Because we're getting a taste of it and we're not doing very good with it, okay? Last one, omniscience. God knows everything is what it means. His knowledge is complete. God has direct cognition of everything in creation. If you want to make it simple, it just means he's all-knowing. He knows it all. Psalm 147, verse 5 says, Great is our Lord and mighty in power. His understanding has no limit. 1 John 3, 20 says, If our hearts condemn us, we know that God is greater than our hearts, and he knows everything. He knows everything. And, and when it comes to knowing more and, and the ability, especially that this device does and gives us the ability to know more, I mean, it's crazy. We're, we, we know what people ate for breakfast and we know where they're going on vacation and we know what car they bought and we know all these things. And, and with Twitter, we know their thoughts and we know what they're thinking. And, and the more we know about people, the less we like and love those people. If you're like me, you look at you like, whatever. So always gets the nice car. Pfft. They always get the free upgrade, you know. You're like, and you're like, and then you're like, I really don't care what you think. You're talking to your phone. Don't care. Delete. You know, <laughs> mute. Block. You know, right? We we know more and more, and we love less and less, and we're fighting with people more and more. You would think that if we shared more of our, our thoughts. We'd be like, oh, now I understand what you're thinking. But instead, we get angry with them, and then we find another subgroup that just thinks like us, and then we hate them and love up. Do you, I mean, this is, we're failing. We are failing, failing, failing at this. Psychologists have said that we evaluate ourselves upward and downward. We feel worse when we evaluate ourselves upward on social media, and we feel better when we evaluate ourselves downward. We're just, we're just knowing more than we were created to know. And I'm not, again, saying that you shouldn't watch the news or follow that, but I will say this. There are stretches in my life where I'll go three, four days, five days, and I won't watch the news at all. 
feels normal, like feels like revival, you know, and, I, and all of a sudden I turn the news on, I'm like, ah, you know, like everything around me looked really good, you know, and, until I turn that on, you know, and I'm not saying that we should never watch these things and we should not try to get smarter. We should try to get smarter. I, I pray that someone finds a cure of cancer, for cancer. I pray that, that people are smarter and they're advancing in their knowledge. But I also believe that there's unnecessary knowledge that we hear. Like, I'm not certain that I was supposed to hear about the boy in the village in Indonesia that a rock fall on him and, he, and then I own that weight of that. I'm not sure that I was meant to own global weight. And if you're old enough to remember, uh, Jim Carrey had a, a movie that he did, Bruce Almighty, and he's all mad at God. And God's like, all right, you think you, you've got it? Go ahead, and, and you do it. And he's like, ah, he can't handle it. And he's like, says yes to everything, and then ruins the whole world. And he's like, I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't do it. It's like, I, I can't handle all the, knowing all these things. I need to know what God has for me. I need to keep the focus on what he's called me to do. I, I, I need to make sure that I'm not wasting so much time. I mean, we're wasting so much time. And, and the, the movie, The Social Dilemma, was talking about how much time we're wasting. And this thing is just programmed to get you to stay trapped in there and to trapped and you're gonna get learn more worthless stuff. And then next thing you know, you didn't do your soap devotions, but you sure know all about what everybody thinks of the election and then you're gonna you know then but you don't have and then next thing you know it just traps you in there we're failing at being god and a blessing should be siri just started talking to me sorry we're failing all right you know <laughs> my mom was saying she said we're not made to carry that weight we're just not made to carry like god carries omniscience so well and we fail so bad at it Man, I just, what's amazing too, think about this. God knows what we're saying. God knows what we're thinking. God even knows our motives. Like here's this wonderful gift and God's like, mm, wrong motive. And he still loves us. Like he's really good at being God and we are really bad at being God. And I think that we should right now just do a checkup and say, God, as we move forward and we go faster and we get taste of these attributes of yours, again, God, in total respect, one one millionth, one ten millionth, whatever, really, the sliver of the sliver of the sliver of how limitless you really are in full respect, as we get a bigger nibble, God, help us to realize how amazing you are. Help us to realign with what you've called us to do. Help us to balance this new knowledge that we have, this new speed that we can run at and live at an effective thing for you, Lord Jesus. Only God is good at being God. Only God. And as we close this, I just give you this thought. He knows each of us by name. Each of us by name. While we were still sinners, God sent his son to die for us before we ever did anything right. He offers forgiveness to everyone, even people, we would say like, not them, but yes, he offers it to everyone. And of course, we'd always say as Christians, please God, offer it to everyone. But sometimes our flesh rises up, not that. He offers it to everyone. God has the bandwidth right now to be in a personal relationship with everyone on earth and everyone that ever was and everyone that ever will be. He's not hitting a limit. He's so good at being God and we're so bad at it and I think it'd be good for us to put him in his rightful place. And as we praise and worship him, when we do that, when we pause, when we pray and even when we get on our knees, we, we say, God, you are so great, we are so small and as we utilize the speed and the technology and all that we have, I just pray that we would realize we're failing at being God and he's just so good. He's so good. And so God, I just pray right now with this checkup on us that you would help us to realize that you are so good. You are so good. I thank you that your arm's not too short, that you can't reach the person that says, can you reach me? I thank you, God, that you have a limitless supply and that you can 
meet every need. I thank you, God, that, that your ways are so much higher than ours and that you can unlock little mysteries and, and give us incredible breakthroughs. God, I thank you that you know us by name, that we're not a number, we're a name to you, we're a person. God, I thank you that you sent your son Jesus to die for us. Jesus, I thank you for being obedient and, and looking around and assessing what was here and still being willing to go to the cross. And Holy Spirit, I thank you for the presence of God that is deposited within us that helps us to communicate in, in a supernatural way. May we glorify you, may we magnify you, may we praise you, may we worship you in a greater way, and may we step back and say, God, we've done a terrible job being God, but you have done an incredible job. To you, we give the glory, the honor, and the praise because you deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. You're God, and you're so amazing. We praise you, we worship you, and we love you, and we are humble that you would love us. Thank you for that. We failed, but you're so good, and thank you for that. In Jesus' name I pray, amen, amen.